Hey guys, it's that dividend guy. Happy Monday. Hopefully everybody's having a GGD, a great green day in the market. You know I always wish the best for my viewers and subscribers. Speaking of subscribers, guys, we just hit 550, so that's super awesome. The consistency is paying off, and I'm very, very excited about that. So today we're going to go over the overall portfolio, the buying power, the individual stocks, the slight change that I made, Berkshire, and then how we're comparing to the overall market. So for today, we're up about $56. For the week, we are up $920. For the month, we are up $1,215. For the month, we are up nearly $1,500. For the year, we're up $7,500, nearly 26%. All time, we are up almost $9,000, up 32.6% since April 13th of 2018. Have buying power of 2137 jumping right in we are uh, sitting at 120 shares of realty income $8,400 worth of market value average cost is right around $67 a share 23 percent of the portfolios in realty income today we're up $19 total up $434 up 5.4 percent on realty income then we've got my personal favorite stock in coca-cola 35 shares, around two grand of market value. Average cost is right around $53 a share, 5.46% of the portfolios in Coca-Cola. Up $2.54 today, up $140 total, up 7.6% on Coca-Cola. Then we've got Altria Group, 152 shares, $7,200 worth of market value. Average cost is around $48 a share. 19.7% of the portfolio is in Altria. Today we are down, or sorry, we're up $13.68. Total, we're up $2.17. Then we've got AbbVie, 74 shares, added 14 shares there um, recently, uh, up to $8,700 of market value. Average cost went up a little bit as well. Uh, I was at $72 a share, now I'm at $80.68. cents. Um, $80.68 for my average cost, which is fine. I'm not worried about it that much. Um, I just watched a video of, of, of a uh, Berkshire Annual Hathaway meeting, talking Warren Buffett talking about how, you know, uh, I knew that this stock was a great company and I didn't buy it because the stock price went up and I was a stickler about it. So I decided, you know what, this is my best performing investment. I've done extensive research on it. I love the company. The dividend growth is phenomenal. It is everything that I look for in a dividend growth stock. I need more of it. So I, I let go of that average cost a bit and purchase more shares. And I'm really happy that I did because now it's paying me around uh, $96 a share um, with that inflated uh, or with that next um, purchase that I did of 14 shares. So around 24% of the portfolio is in AbbVie. Today we're on $28 uh, uh, for the position. Uh, in total we are up $2,700, up 46%. And a dividend coming in of $78, but that is inaccurate. That's only for our 60 shares because I bought the 14 shares after this and I do not believe they've increased their dividend uh, this year. So However um, big of an increase, last year I believe it was uh, 17 cents to 30 cents, so it was about, um, I think it was like 8 to, I think it was 12 cent, a 12 cent increase. Um, that will, you know, reflect very, very well for our portfolio. The more shares you have, I wanted to get to 100, but um, I was a stickler about the, the cost, but I'm not going to be anymore. So the next time this, this stock comes around, I will be purchasing it because I love the stock. Uh, so I'm not hung up on my price anymore. Then we've got national retail properties. I did switch it out for Procter & Gamble, and I'll get to that later. But um, just for dividend efficiency-wise, it is more efficient. It takes less money to buy a share of stock. And um, the goal for this set of months is AbbVie is going to be purchasing um, Aflac stock, and then 3N is going to be purchasing Pfizer. So um, we have three shares of 3N. 100 and f about $148 of market value. Average cost is $49.25. 0.4% of the portfolios in 3N just added it today. So, of course, it's going to have the same return today as it does total, up uh, about 19 cents. But I will be pumping more money into this uh, position because the biggest um, two um, tenants 
And it's triple net lease, so it's set up just like Realty Income, so that's why I like it so much. Um, but the two biggest tenants are Arby's, Taco Bell, and um, Mr. Car Wash, which that's really the one that I'm after. As well as they own gyms, convenience stores, and I believe some other retail as well. Um, so I, I love the company, and I, I shouldn't have gotten rid of it. Um, but I will get to why I got rid of Procter & Gamble, because I really didn't. I did sell them, but I didn't get rid of the company, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Next, we've got Aflac, 115 shares, just bought another 10 um, with my last paycheck. $6,100 of market value, average cost is $49.56, around 17% of the portfolios in Aflac. Today, we're up 28, around $28, total up 465, up 8.17% on Aflac. And then we've got Pfizer to close out the portfolio, 92 shares that will be going up this next month. Around $4,000 of market value will be above 4 k before the end of the month. I'm uh, sorry, before uh, the end of next month. Um, average cost is around $40 a share, 10.5% of the portfolios in Pfizer. Today we're up near $20 total. We are up uh, 185 up 5.06%. So guys, overall, really happy with the with the uh, positions. Um, excited that I added more more AbbVie this month, and I added more Aflac. So I will be adding enough Pfizer for me to be at 100 shares. So excited about that as well. So a lot to be pumped up about in the portfolio. So uh, jumping into why I sold Procter and Gamble, I'm going to own Berkshire Hathaway. And uh, one of the reasons that I want to own Berkshire is, of course, the overall returns are phenomenal for this company. It's a great holding company. They own 400,000 shares of Coca-Cola. They own a bunch of Kraft Heinz, a big position in Apple. They just bought a bunch of uh, Verizon stock as well, American Express. You know, th there's just s certain investments Buffett is known for. But there are a lot of companies that fly under the radar because they're, they're smaller positions um, compared to their big like top five so they're still gigantic positions making a lot of money for Berkshire they just don't show up on the annual report because they're so minuscule compared to the overall arcing Berkshire Hathaway like according to the overall company these investments are very small so they own some Mondelez which is a company that I've looked into a lot they own Oreos, Chips Ahoy, Triscuit, uh, Chicken and a Biscuit um, and my favorite one is, is Oreos, but the second favorite is Trident. So they own chewing gum, which is something that I've looked into and wanted to own. But the problem is Mondelez is $60 a share for a 32 cent dividend. So as much as I love the company, love the assets that they own, it just doesn't make sense for a dividend investor to own it, in my opinion, because the growth is not as good as some other stocks that I could find, like, say, um, say uh, Allstate or Coca-Cola has a better dividend growth rate than Mondelez, so does Altria. So it's just not practical for dividend growth and I could I could put that money somewhere else like an Altria, WP Carry or something like that that would grow more as a dividend play. Same thing with Procter & Gamble. Now it is a great dividend growth stock. They did a 10% dividend increase last year, but the problem is it takes like 13 or 11 to 13K to be dividend efficient in that stock, which over time, I could do that, but it makes more sense to put money into 3N because that's only going to be about um, $4,000, which I can do within a year, and then buy Pfizer forever. So dividend efficiency-wise, as in it buys the next month, 3N's way, way better. But the thing is, Procter & Gamble is owned by Berkshire Hathaway. They own a big stake in that company because they own Gillette, which was acquired by Procter & Gamble. So again, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway owns stock in Procter & Gamble. They own stock in Johnson & Johnson as well, which is another great company, but not one that I would put my money into because it would take so much to be dividend efficient. So there's a lot of companies that Berkshire owns that I would want to own, but I would rather own it as a holding for Berkshire Hathaway than own it directly. And so that's, that's where I'm at with it, uh, as well as the big banks and some of the pharmaceuticals that they bought um, and some of the recent, pur recent purchases that they have. So the thing is, with the amount of money that Berkshire has, they can buy pretty much whatever they want and be quote-unquote dividend deficient in anything, literally anything. Um, the amount of dividends that 
he gets from Coca-Cola, he could buy like another 1% of the company. So it's just a crazy amount of money that they're generating. Plus the insurance, I haven't even gone into the insurance businesses yet, of course, uh, which is the big money maker for Berkshire. But that's why I would rather own um, pro companies like J&J, Procter & Gamble, Mondelez, even like J.P. Morgan Chase. I think he might have sold out of that bank all, all together, altogether. But there are certain holdings that Berkshire has a a gigantic stake in that would be big for you or me for for retail investors but it's nothing compared to berkshire and they're dividend efficient in those companies because of the amount of, of shares that they own so that's how i'm going to play um, a lot of the companies that i like and would like to own outright but they don't make sense dividend wise and that's exactly what procter and gamble is love procter and gamble it's in one of my top five favorite stocks of all time it just doesn't make sense because i can't be dividend efficient in it so um, I just wanted to explain uh, why I sold out of, of um, Procter & Gamble simply because it's in Berkshire Hathaway stock. So guys, we're going to take a look at um, how we're performing. So for the year, what's our percentage again? Like 25, almost 26, and 32 for all time. So let's take a look how we're comparing to the Dow Jones. For the year, it's up 32, so it's up like 7%, and then 89%, so it's, just, oh, five year, of course. Yeah, so we can only do the one year because we've only we haven't been in there for five we haven't been investing for five years yet. So for on the one year for the Dow Jones, it's beating us by like seven percent, not a crazy amount. And then spy for the year, I'm sure it's got thirty six, so it's beating us by like six percent as well. So we're not matching the benchmark of the S and P five hundred or the Dow Jones, but that's okay. Keep in mind, guys, this is not a growth portfolio. We don't have anything like Apple, Microsoft, Facebook. No, we have no growth stocks as of right now. So the fact that we're only a few percentage points behind is phenomenal. So um, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, remember, uh, I post a portfolio update and I try to do a second video every single day. Today, it was a little weird because the Best Buy video, the three stocks to buy, um, dividend growth stocks came out at midnight because I forgot that it sets it up that way, but it's, it's okay. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button. And when you do, hit the bell notification so you don't miss any updates. Like I said, I try to post two videos every single day. So if you are a fan of consistency here on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you tomorrow with another Robinhood portfolio update.